Ahoy there, pirates! Marky, or Kerfuffle Hustle, here from Rare Thief. Fate of the Damned update has arrived, bringing an eerie aura to the Sea of Thieves. It's that time of year when we revel in all things haunted and hallowed, most notably by celebrating the annual festival of the Damned. But something else is haunting these shores. Lorena has heard rumors that Shadows of Fate are appearing throughout the Sea of Thieves. We've seen Shadows of Fate before. Activating the Fort of the Damned certainly wakes these skellies up. There's also something about that Athena's run of Thieves' Haven that stirs them up. Ah, uh, but those appearances all take place on a small number of islands and all in the ancient isles. Now, it seems that Shadows of Fate are appearing on numerous islands throughout the Shores of Plenty and the Wilds. Lorena sent Bilgerat crews to investigate this rumor. They were tasked with acquiring various flames of fate, hunting shadows of fate, and recording their findings along the way. Unfortunately, those bilge rats have not returned. If we're going to find out more about these shadows of fate, we'd better first find those bilge rats. Lorena is asking for any and all pirates to help get to the bottom of this, offering a fate of the damned voyage in the black market. And great news, the voyage is free. Lorena will actually be offering several such voyages, one for each week of this month-long event. This is simply the first voyage, and it's called The Search for Wild, Plentiful Shadows of Fate. For this voyage, you and your crew will sail from island to island in the shores of Plenty and the wilds, looking for the Bilgerat crews that never returned, and investigating this emerging threat. During the voyage, you will also acquire the green and purple flames of fate, without a trip to the Fairy of the Damned. Once you've gotten your voyage from Lorena, head to your ship and vote. Upon voting for the voyage, you will receive a note from Lorena in your quest radial. Lorena's note will be distinguished from your other quests by a Bill's Rat symbol. The note will remind you that the Shadows of Fate are running rampant in the shores of Plenty and the Wilds. It will also suggest that you visit Duke at the Lagoon of Whispers. He might be able to help you investigate these eerie anomalies. Sail on over to the Lagoon of Whispers and speak with Duke. He does have some information, but stories are best shared over some grog. In particular, Duke's special grog. The trouble is, Duke can't quite remember where he buried his special stash, so you'll need to find it for him. You're looking for Duke's green bilgerat shovel, sticking out of the ground. It could be anywhere. Luckily, Lagoon of Whispers is a small island, so spotting it shouldn't take long. Dig right at that shovel, and you'll unearth Duke's special grog. According to Duke, you can't sell this chest of grog, so there's nothing to do but pick it up and stumble back over to Duke. Once you've returned Duke's special grog, it seems to loosen his tongue a bit. It seems that the other Bilgerat crew came by before us, and was very well prepared. They even had an island map, showing where they thought Shadows of Fate might be. Unfortunately, they shared some of Duke's special grog, and these tipsy turtles left their map behind. Having no use for this map himself, Duke gives you this Bill's Rat crew map. What next? Well, you'll need to use that map to locate a lost Bill's Rat. You'll find the Bill's Rat crew map in your quest radial. It will look very similar to an X marks the spot quest, but it will not have an X on it. <laughs> Instead of digging up some artifact or treasure on the island, you will be scouring the island for a lost Bill's Rat crew member. Don't worry. These maps will always lead to a relatively smaller island in either the Shores of Plenty or the Wilds, so you won't have much ground to cover. There is one tricky bit to maps of smaller islands, though. While many pirates likely recognize the larger islands at a glance, even veteran pirates don't always recognize the smaller islands right away. Of course, you can use your map table. The trouble is that for small islands, you'll need to zoom in on each individual little island spec and compare it to your Bilgerat crew map. Another option would be to use the island finder feature in your interactive map. There you'll find miniature maps for every island in the Sea of Thieves. Simply scroll through and find the island that matches your map. At the top of the island finder panel, you can see the island sizes and set that. You can set it smaller for quicker scrolling or larger to get a better look. And below each miniature map, you'll see the name of the island and its coordinates. You can also just click on the island and the interactive map will bring it front and center. I know this might seem like quite the digression, but I once watched a streaming crew spend 20 minutes looking for an island. <laughs> so I thought it might be worth mentioning here. And while we're on the topic, actually, the interactive map also now has a new marker set. 
a Fate of the Damned Week 1, and this set includes markers for challenges and voyages alike, including markers for the bilge rat locations on each of these bilge rat crew maps. Maybe you've scoured the island and can't seem to find the scurvy dog. Maybe there's an enemy ship closing in and you need to find this matey right away. <laughs> Whatever the reason, don't worry. Simply turn on the markers titled Voyage, find the bilge rat crew and their maps. This marker will show you all the possible bilge rat locations for each island. This way you can narrow your search to a few key spots. What if you want to find these bilge rats yourself? Well, that is fantastic too. What are we looking for? Well, sadly, as you've likely surmised, you won't be finding any crew members still living. You are looking for a skeleton. Of course, there are tons of skeletons strewn about all the islands, so how would you know this is a crew member? Well, near the fallen bilge rat, you'll see a bilge rat crew journal and another bilge rat crew map. Even better, you'll see a lantern nearby. This lantern will help you spot the bilge rat. Why? Ah, because the lantern holds a bright green flame of fate. Because of that lantern, you actually might find it easier to find these bilge rats at night. Once you do find the bilge rat, pull out your own lantern, raise it up, and collect the flame of fate for yourself. You'll want to do this before you pick up that new bilge rat crew map. Upon picking up the next bilge rat crew map, you will be ambushed by shadows of fate. Killing them is not required to continue on your journey, so you could just make a run for it. However, killing these shadows of fate skeletons will reward you with the skull of the damned. Killing these skellies will also help you complete a goal for this week's Fate of the Wild Shores Challenge, a light in dark places. If you haven't the foggiest clue what I'm talking about, no worries. We have a whole video devoted to this week's Fate of the Damned challenges, which we'll link below. For now, suffice it to say, you might want to take a stab at those skellies. On to your second Bilge Rat crew map. This will be just like the first Bilge Rat crew map. It will direct you to a small island in either the Shores of Plenty or the Wilds. There will be no X on the map, but now that you've found one bilge rat, it will likely be easier to find another. This bilge rat should also have a lantern nearby, but this time you're looking for a purple flame of fate. Once again, there will be a map nearby as well. However, this time it will be a ritual location map. So, on to your ritual location map. Like your bilge rat crew maps, the ritual location map will take you to an island in the Shores of Plenty or the Wilds. The ritual location map will differ from your previous maps in two ways though. First, the ritual location map will always lead to a large island. Second, the ritual location map has an X on it. This X marks a precise ritual location, so sail to the island and head toward that X. As you draw closer to that X, you might pause to see what those skeletons are up to. It seems that some skeletons are indeed attempting some sort of ritual. As you close in on the scene, their ritual succeeds. These skeletons have brought back the ghost of Grey Marrow. If you've faced Grey Marrow, or the ghost of Grey Marrow, in Revenge of the Morning Star, or on the Fort of the Damned, then you know he is a formidable foe. Ah, but you are in luck. It seems that this ritual has not brought Grey Marrow back at his full strength. In his weakened state, this ghost of Grey Marrow is far easier to kill. The damage he deals and his knockback range are both reduced. The Shadows of Fate skeletons he summons are also far easier to kill. And perhaps most importantly, the ghost of Grey Marrow's health is significantly diminished. Defeating Grey Marrow likely won't take you long. And as soon as he's crumbled to the ground, you'll see a Ritual Skull in his stead. You can turn the Ritual Skull in to Lorena or the Reaper's Hideout, or you can use the Ritual Skull and the couple of flames you've already acquired to begin the Fort of the Damned. You'll also get another fun little reward, the Face of Fear. It's such a quintessential way to dress up in the spooky spirit, face paint. Once you've completed the Fate of the Damned Voyage, you will receive the Face of Fear face paint in your vanity chest. Alright, pirates, you should now be quite well prepared to set out on this voyage. Pick it up from Lorena, sail on over to Duke, and pour one out for those poor bilge rats. No, but seriously, pour it out.
I would not trust Duke's special grog. <laughs> well, whatever you have in your tankard, raise it up. Cheers to the Viljots, cheers to the ferryman, and cheers to ye, me hearties. Happy sails.